All right, our next, our next guest speaker is Sean Lowford, who's the Dene facilitator and facilitator of the Indigenous Elders and Medicine People's Council. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Sean Mulford. I, I came from Arizona. Uh, a long journey here. Uh, last couple of days. So thank you for inviting me. And uh, you know, we've been as as uh, Corinna had said, you know, indigenous people, we we're always here from the beginning, and uh, and so we're still here, and we still have to carry on the message that we were given at the beginning of creation, and we we hold something uh, really sacred since that time and we still hold on to it today so uh, we'll have everybody kind of come around a little bit more and um, and I think this is what they call preaching to the choir yeah. you know because the people that are here are the ones that are doing the work that are documenting uh, what's going on and so Really, it's about letting you know, as indigenous people, that we're happy to see you uh, speaking for your own future. You know, it was just the elders that would be talking, and they would be talking about all the things that you all have been talking about, and it was just them. Now, I see the non-Indian people are starting to speak for their own future. Not, not, we're not having to do that for them. Even the young uh, girl, she said that. She's speaking for her uh, generations. So that's how we are as indigenous people. We always speak for the generations uh, to come. But we, we speak for all life, not only uh, human, but uh, all life, the animals, the plants, and the natures, the God's creation, the water, all these things we speak about them because we can't separate them. They're indivisible. The creation, the sacred elements of life are indivisible. And, and as you see these energy companies and these uh, corporations come after what they want, which is the resources of the earth and the money and the power. We've been dealing with that a long time. And we, we, we look at that and we say, how do we teach these people how to live on this land? And as one of my elders said, they came here and they said that our ways aren't written down. He said, they say our ways are not written down. But he said, I can test that. They said, they're written everywhere. In the trees, in the cloud, in the ground, all the animals. They just don't know how to read it. They don't know how to understand it. And so, we hold on to that sacred language of the earth and that connection. And so, you know, I'm from uh, Arizona. We have our four sacred mountain there. And that's our, our foundation, our spiritual foundation. But we're related over here to the original Miccosukee Seminole Nation, Aboriginal peoples. We're spiritually related. Our sacred shell to the east is a white shell and then to the west, the abalone shell. So we recognize that, we understand this area. 
we're part of this area too, so we, we speak for it. You know, I, I've been getting some of the reports from Shannon and reading that. And I remember she, she had one about an otter, yeah. you know, that, that uh, uh, got killed because of this pipeline. So, you know, for that, I came here and recognized that the nature is under attack here. And so we have to stand with, with each other as indigenous people because we share the same values of the earth and the balance and the harmony of all creation and for the future of all life. We understand each other, even though the, the Seminole from here and then all the way up to Alaska, all the way South America, even over the world, the indigenous people all around the world, we share that same value of mother nature and life. But we have to go and, and deal with these people who have a different value. Their values on money and power. How do we wake them up? We said, you're gonna, you're gonna be affecting your grandkids, your great grandkids. That doesn't wake them up. How do you deal with a people that doesn't even care about their own generations? That's what we're that's what we're up against. You know, they don't they all they care about is the money and that's it. They're blinded by everything else. Just greed. So we're dealing with that energy of greed and we have to we have to really be careful with it and how we deal with that. And you know, this problem is not gonna be solved uh, without spirituality without prayer, uh, without that sacredness in how we treat one another and how we treat the earth. So we have to look at that in ourselves, in our own being, our own spirituality to heal how our connection is with the earth and with all creation. When we do that, we can speak for it in a stronger way. But we're not addressing things from that standpoint. We're, these people, they're addressing it from an economic standpoint. They're saying, this is how much money we're gonna make. Oh, this is, this is if we switch to uh, alternative, this is the money that's gonna come from there. That's not gonna do it. It has to come from that deeper place within your spirit, your connection to the Creator and that understanding of that into the future, and then the, the, the ground, and then the sky, and everything in between. So we have to get to that point where the solution has to be spiritual. That's the only way we can do it with prayer. So we're here to uh, support the, uh, Bobby and his nation, and we recognize them, they say, uh, federally unrecognized but uh, as he says the Creator recognizes him but we also recognize him and uh, the responsibilities that that he has to care for this land and then to help guide you to continue to work for a better future so we have a lot of work to do and we have a uh, we have more people that need to be here. You know, they had the Women's Day in uh, uh, Washington, D.C. You know, there was a lot of women. But also the Mother Earth is a woman. And so we have to acknowledge that too. That that connection between the female and the Earth has to be really strong and really balanced and in harmony. And then that way they can get their strength too. So we, when they gather like that, we have to acknowledge the earth because that's the woman too. And so uh, a lot is going on now. You know, we have a new um, person uh, uh, at the steering wheel. 
on a lot of these issues that are going to be impacting us as indigenous peoples. You know, the United States got a new president, and he's he's uh, he's basing his uh, policies on money, just what we're talking about. You know, so it's all about the money, but when you do that you sometimes become morally bankrupt you know and so you don't have that within you to make the right decisions because they're based on something else and so we we're going to have to really come together and we're all going to have to point ourselves in the in the right direction with the earth because the next four years is going to be challenging the earth they're going to be going after all the resources and they're fast-tracking as we've already seen a lot of these things. So there has to be more of us. We have to educate each other. And you got to know your facts. You have to understand what's being done. You have to go to the meetings. You have to take the time to educate yourself, to really understand where their limitation is. They can only talk so far. And then when you, as this gentleman here that spoke earlier, you know, he knew it. He knew. He knew their limitation, and he pointed it out. And when you do that, what do they do? Well, they check in that other uh, department over there. Maybe it's yeah. maybe the answer's over there. And they make you chase your tail. And uh, But, you know, you have to seek the know-how. You have to educate yourself to understand the limitations. And as my elder said, educate yourself not to become them, but to overcome them. And so that's what we got to do. We have to educate ourselves in these policies to overcome them because all they know is money. And as, as that otter was there, that's a real indication that we're not doing our job. We, we, we need it to do better. So next time we need to get together like this, we need to be educate and inform each other, educate everybody, so then that way when we have these type of meetings, we'll have the uh, secretaries and all the politicians standing here so they can listen and we're not just talking amongst each other. You know, because it's the, they're the decision maker. You know, we were not, uh, Corinna invited us to the State Department. And one of the elders there, he presented a question. And this was in December. He said, how do we change 7.5 million people? How? How do we do that? That's a challenge. We've got to change that many people to live in a better way. And it begins by going to the leadership. When you can get to the leadership and change them, then that's how you steer 7.5 billion people, not million, billion. So we have to get to them and they have to hear the voice. And we're still here saying the same thing as we have always said, which is, it's going to come down to prayer, faith, and belief in the Creator. Yeah, thank you.